This is another program in a series presented by the Rosicrucian Order, AMARC, a worldwide educational, cultural, and philosophical organization with its headquarters located in San Jose, California. This presentation is on visualization, a technique so important to the beginning student as well as the advanced member. Speaking to this subject is the Director of Public Relations for AMORC, Christy Knutsen. Ms. Knutsen is the coordinator of the Harmonium Seminar Program and often represents AMORC on radio and television. A few weeks ago, Asaror shared with me a visualization experience she had had. She was going through a crisis in her life, surrounded by unanswered and seemingly unanswerable problems. After talking with some friends about her terrible feelings of fear and desperation, one friend pointed out that all during their conversation, the Soror kept repeating, all my life, I've never taken the easy way out. I never take the easy way out. I've got an idea, said the friend. Why don't you try it? Why don't you go ahead and take the easy way out? So the Soror went home, determined to follow that suggestion. After closing her eyes and relaxing, she told herself that this time I'm going to take the easy way out. Immediately a scene sprung into her mind, and she found that she was inside a small room, almost like a little mountain cabin, with rough wooden walls and floor and windows barred with wooden shutters. Now, each wall had doors in it and one door was blocked by a pile of fat. The Soror felt she was a little overweight and only lost weight to gain it back again and again. Another door was blocked by her mother and another by her brother, both of whom she was very worried about. All her bills and debts were piled in front of another door, and other doors were blocked by additional symbols of her guilts, fears, and problems. Now, the door she was facing was almost completely blocked by a giant pacemaker for her heart. It was this medical problem which really was the most terrifying and difficult of all for the Soror. But knowing she had to, she began to pull and tug on this pacemaker to be able to get through the door. And just when she'd get her fingertips on the doorknob, the pacemaker would slip and fall back in front of the door again. Finally, exhausted with her struggles, she stopped to rest. And finally, she took a look at that one door over there that didn't have a single thing in front of it. There it stood, just waiting for her to take the easy way out. Now, she stood looking at that door as the realization slowly dawned on her that she didn't want to open it. She didn't want to go out. She hadn't the faintest idea what was on the outside of that door, and frankly, she was too scared to look. Well, the realization began to be clear that although she was indeed very unhappy, she found that she was actually quite safe and secure. She was quite comfortable there in her small room surrounded by all her old familiar problems. Unfortunately, figuring she had to, she decided she had to open that door. So, mustering up her courage, she opened the door a crack, then took a deep breath and slowly opened it and looked out for the first time. And there, spread before her, was a vista of exquisite beauty. She found she was on the side of a, of a mountain with a, a, a delightful path swooping down into a beautiful valley and up again toward another higher peak standing in solemn, misty purple majesty. Sunshine, birds, trees, animals, and that enticing path toward the mountain, all within her grasp while she had kept herself locked up in this stuffy, dark little room. Suddenly, the insight flashed into her mind that all this time she had been so concerned with visualizing the process of getting well, the process of losing weight and helping her family, 
that she had never given any thought. She had no reality. She had never visualized what her real goal was in life, what she wanted ultimately after all these problems passed. Her goal had never been the mountain, peace, serenity, and good feelings about herself. Her goal had been losing weight, paying bills, and struggling with giant pacemakers. When this visualization hit home, her entire life changed. What I really want, she said, is not this small, stuffy little room with its problems. What I want is that mountain. I am not this dark little room. I am the path, and I am the mountain. Interestingly enough, Fraters and Sorors, six months later, and this is a true story, the Soror's family, weight, and medical problems were solved, and she was well on her way to paying off all her debts. I have shared this story with you to illustrate that visualization is the source of our lives. All experience, all reality, begins with a simple image in the mind. Hermes Trismegistus, from whom Hermetic philosophy and our teachings stem, stated over 2,000 years ago that images held in the mind affect the physical universe, and consequently, a particular image will bring about a particular effect, negative and destructive, or positive and productive as we choose. Alchemy, the later descendant of Hermetic philosophy, incorporated this insight into a process called transmutation. Although confused by the uninitiated with the process or the transformation of base metals into gold, we know it is actually the process of inner transforma transformation and spiritual development. By learning to create and control mental images, ancient and modern alchemists experience the effects produced by those images. By holding a specific image in the mind, the alchemist experiences the effects produced by the specific energy of that image and finds those effects transforming not only the self, but extending out and transforming the world around the self. In effect, this means that without conscious, creative use of visualization, without a continued use of such visualization, fraters and sorors, we and our world die. Every day, in small, little ways, we become less, losing our vitality and aliveness. We cut ourselves off from the fertile and renewing source of our intuition. In a sense, we cut ourselves off from our inner self. And instead, we become trapped in a growing circle of old thoughts and ideas, of yesterday's beliefs, experiences, and realities, which simply cannot solve today's problems and challenges. And what is worse, we prevent these seeds of our past experience from growing into tomorrow's exciting and productive new realities. But all is not lost. It's not as hopeless as it may seem, because with an adventurous use of visualization, our world springs alive, and we find success everywhere in the myriad aspects of our studies that involve the use of visualization, like projection, telepathy, metaphysical healing. And we find fulfillment in our jobs, with our families and friends, and in our sound, healthy lives. With the use of visualization, we find a source within us of unlimited 
information and inspiration. And most importantly, we, with the continued use of visualization, we find within ourselves a growing understanding of personal and cosmic truth. We find, in fact, an insight into the very meaning and purpose of our lives. But you know, what I'm telling you about visualization, I'm sure, is not new to most of you. We probably have all heard this before. As a matter of fact, being Rosicrucians, the very fact that we are Rosicrucians, acknowledges our understanding of the import that the images we hold in our minds has to our progress on the path. But I know that I have had, at times, some difficulties with my work in visualizing, and I would wager that there are possibly one or two of you who have had similar difficulties. As with so many of our metaphys metaphysical principles, visualization in theory is very simple. In practice, it can be quite difficult at times. So today, we're going to examine together what some of the problems we can experience with visualization are. Then we are going to find some solutions. In so doing, we will hopefully discover together, or we will experience some insights which will give us further success, not only with our studies, but also with our lives. As you know, in our everyday lives, an actuality exists for which we create and experience a reality. But the reality we create in our minds becomes so vibrant, so infused with vital life force, that we transmute it into an actuality with a corresponding manifestation in our physical lives. Thus, visualization is defined as the creation of a dynamic mental image in our minds. This image then becomes attuned with all of the people, circumstances, elements necessary to its manifestation. And we become aware of this attunement intuitively and are thus intuitively led to all the elements necessary to help us realize this goal. The actual process of visualization is really quite simple. First, we use our reasoning and logic, our outer objective mind, to determine the goal of our visualization. We first formulate a clear and definite idea of exactly what it is we're going to visualize. If the idea that we're working with is still so complicated and involved that we can't see it almost instantaneously in our minds, then we must continue to work with it until it becomes more manageable, more compact, so to speak, and we are able then to visualize it quite clearly. We always simplify a visualization as much as possible. Once we have clarified our goal, we then ask our inner self, how is this a worthy goal? Show me how this will bring happiness to others as well as to myself. When we are satisfied with the response from our inner self, we can be confident that our visualization will be working within cosmic law. So now that we have clarified our goal, and satisfied ourselves as to its worthiness, we're ready to visualize. Choosing a quiet place and a quiet moment, we become very calm and receptive. Using Rosicrucian techniques or other methods, we physically relax, letting all thought of the physical body, letting all strain and tension drain from ourselves. This is very important. Many visualiz visualizations fail because we remain to a degree more conscious of our physical tension than we are of our inner images. Once relaxed, we can begin building our mental images, keeping them in the present or past, seeing them as something that is or has already happened. 
Then we gradually add details to this image, sound, smell, color, movement, and emotion, until suddenly, for an instant, the image comes completely alive. And instead of looking at it, for that instant we are in it. We are it. We hold this thought just a moment, then mentally say, into the cosmic, I release this image, it is done. And thus we, we release the visualization, completely dismissing it from our conscious minds with the absolute conviction that it is done. It is complete. Eventually, we'll begin receiving intuitive promptings that will lead us to specific people, experiences, places, events, objects, which if we then act on those things, we will experience the manifestation of our visualization. But this is crucial, Fraters and Sorors. We must act or nothing will happen. The law of the triangle makes it clear that before the third point of the triangle, the manifestation of our goal, is achieved, the first two points must be actively combined. We, with our positive, active desire and ambition, are the first point of the triangle. The second point of the triangle are all the negative passive elements necessary to our having the goal. It is only when we actively combine with these elements that we will experience our visualization manifest almost like a miracle, solid, alive, and vibrant in our physical realities. Let's try this out together now, Fratis and Sorors. Please choose a goal, something that you would like to experience now in your lives. It can be a material object, uh, an attitude, a harmonious relationship, health, anything that you want. Now, normally, we first work with a visualization to clarify the goal. Then we uh, commune with our inner selves to determine its worthiness. However, for our purposes now, we're going to work directly with the visualization. Please close your eyes and become very, very quiet, very relaxed, taking a deep breath. Inhale through the nose and hold it, and exhale, feeling all the strain and tension draining out of your body, and inhale, feeling your body becoming limp and very relaxed, and exhale, and inhale again, feeling peace and serenity flowing into the centermost place of your being. And exhale. Breathing normally, you feel quiet and calm. Now in your mind, visualize very clearly exactly what you want. See your goal accomplished and hold that thought for a moment. Now, Fratis and Sororas mentally say, into the cosmic, I release this image, it is done. You may open your eyes. Very good. But you know, this brings up a particular difficulty that many of us has, have had. As I said earlier, visualization is sometimes easier said than done. Many Fratis and Sororas, and frankly myself among them, have complained that they have real difficulty in forming any images at all, much less having them manifest. Others say that, just as common, it's difficult to create images that 
are detailed, that have the, the uh, uh, crispness and clarity that is so necessary to a successful visualization. Perhaps this is so because it, it reflects a quality of our daily lives. In our everyday hectic affairs, we quite often get so caught up in our list of things to do, in our feelings and emotions, that we don't always have time to observe the details of life around us, the sounds and smells and color of life. Running from one errand to the next, we don't always stop to look at the color of the sky or the way the sun sparkles off a fountain or the leaves of a tree on the street. But if we don't see these details in our everyday lives, how on earth can we expect to in our visualizations? Without an acute observation of life, we build up no storehouse of images, sensations, and experiences to draw from. Now, the obvious answer is, of course, to train our outer selves to become more observant, to uh, experience life more vividly. And this really is not as hard or as time-consuming as it may seem. As we're going to see in just one moment, there are many exercises offered in the monographs to help us to this very end. And most of them begin by moving us from simple to more complex observations, followed by a visualization. Why don't we try one of these exercises right now? In this exercise,